Hundreds of people with disabilities got to try new things at the Disabilities Expo today. It's a day designed to help people find resources and find the courage to never say never. Basketball, a fashion show, even rock climbing. The Disabilities Expo is designed to show everyone has no limits. My disability doesn't stop me and my palate is accepting special needs children and not letting their disability get them down. Special guests Sam Schmidt and Mark Wellman are proof of that. Both injured in accidents, neither has stopped pursuing his passion. I grew up racing and I was always very competitive and so when I got hurt and it came down to making a decision, you know, what is worth two and a half hours getting up every day, uh, I went right back to racing because that was my passion, that was my love. It's great to come out to these kind of events and show the possibilities and have people participate in this kind of activity. For Wellman, that's outdoor activities like rock climbing. A 24-foot wall, we have different harnessing systems, pulley systems, so anybody with a disability that has the desire to try this, we can make it happen. It shows you, even if, if you have a disability, you have the, no boundaries to what you can do. People at the expo could also see products and services to help make their lives a little easier. Hello everybody and welcome to the Disabilities Expo here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. My name is Glenn Marini. I'm the sports director of Wayne TV. That's the CBS station here in Fort Wayne if you're not from the Summit City. And over the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to be doing something pretty special. It's a, an honor for me to get the chance to sit down with Sam Schmidt and Mark Wellman, two guys who have reached the pinnacle in their sport. Uh, Mark right now is actually helping someone up on the wall, typical, typical Mark, I guess you'd say, out there helping him uh, get up there. So he's going to be joining us in just a few minutes as soon as that guy reaches the top. Um, and Sam is joining us right now. Of course, he's an Indy car owner. And... Uh, Sam, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. No problem. Certainly a uh, great, uh, great event I see here. First time I've been here, and uh, hope for many more years of success. Now, back in 2000, you were a driver down in Florida getting ready for the season, and you suffered an accident. Uh, you were on a respirator for five weeks, and it rendered you quadriplegic. Talk a little bit about during that recovery period, what got you back into the sport, and got you into it as a car owner? Well, certainly, like I'm sure uh, a lot of people in this room can relate to, it's, uh, it's definitely a life-changing experience. Um, when I was hurt, I was kind of fortunate to be knocked out and not know what was going on, but uh, the top neurosurgeon in Florida told my wife to find me a nursing home. I'd be on a ventilator the rest of my life and basically useless to society, so uh, I'm happy she fired him. and. Uh, and found somebody else up in St. Louis, uh, Dr. John McDonald. Um, he basically said, look, we'll work our tail off, we'll try and get him off the vent, and if for some reason we can't, we'll, we'll teach you how to live with it, but we're going to work really hard at it. And so uh, they got me out, airlifted, airlifted up there, and he got me off the ventilator, you know, five weeks later, and a and, uh, huge quality of life difference. But, uh, um, you know, it, 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 I think even more so than myself in the wheelchair, it uh, turns your family's life upside down and so I guess I was sort of driven in rehabilitation to uh, figure out what can I do to earn a living to uh, uh, support my family the same way I did before and you know that's kind of one of the things I'm still preaching 13 years later is it takes you two and a half hours to get up every morning now you gotta you gotta find something you love doing to make it worthwhile one of the things you found that made it worthwhile was the Sam Schmidt Foundation during your recovery Tell us a little bit about that because it benefits so many people around the world and it's touched so many lives that uh, I know I read a quote from you. You said, if I was a driver, I wouldn't have been able to touch so many lives. So it, in a sense, it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, well, I mean, I obviously wouldn't wish this injury on anybody, but, uh, you know, one of the silver linings has been the fact that to see the foundation grow and see the thousands of people that it's helping, we've had uh, in 12 years of the foundation, we've had some pretty huge success on the on the rehabilitation and the uh, and the research side of things. Uh, we've also had uh, a number of programs, whether it be uh, on the wounded, wounded warrior veteran side of things or um, helping people in the community uh, through outreach programs. And so, you know, literally 
thousands of emails over the years uh, of people that have gotten back into the workforce and living active, productive lives because of uh, you know the example the foundation setting. So that's a uh, that's a that's an added bonus. All right, Mark, I'm going to turn to you. Um, we talked a little bit a while ago about what you've been able to do. 1982, you're climbing, you fall 100 feet, you're rendered paraplegic, and then seven years later, after the recovery process, you climb El Capitan, and then you climb the Half Dome at Yosemite. First paraplegic to ever do it. What was it? Yeah, give them a round of applause for that. It's amazing. Thank you. What was it? Because I think when, when something bad happens, as human nature is, we have a tendency to say, oh, I'm not going to do that again. What got you back on the mountain? Well, you know, I became a ranger in Yosemite National Park. Uh, after my accident, I went back to school and got a degree in park management and became a ranger in Yosemite. And all of a sudden, I was in the mecca of big wall climbing in this country. And uh, met, a, met a gentleman by the name of Mike Corbett uh, back in 1989. And Mike had climbed El Cap. Uh, 42 times. And I don't want to say that Mike was wow. getting bored with climbing that huge <laughs> monolith, but maybe he was. So uh, I showed him a picture of a woman being lowered down a cliff in a wheelchair, and we developed some adaptive equipment to allow us to get on uh, El Cap and Half Dome. And when I climbed El Capitan, it was doing uh, equivalent of 7,000 pull-ups in seven days. But today we have mini El Capitan at the back of the room here. And uh, if you have the desire to try some rock climbing, we have pulley systems, different uh, harnessing systems that allow you to actually do some rope ascension. Uh, so if you have the, the, the desire to try this, uh, we can uh, help you do that. The first thing obviously that jumps out about you is the rock climbing, El Cap, Yosemite Half Dome. But you're a Renaissance man of sorts because you're not only doing that, you're an author. You're a filmmaker. What's the overall message through those mediums that you get out to people? Well, in, in my videos, it's, it's about people with disabilities trying new things. Um, you know, just like, you know, thinking out of the box maybe a little bit. Uh, you can try hand cycling, skiing, rock climbing, kayaking. There's all these different types of adaptations that are out there, and it allows people to uh, do the things that they want to do. I mean. My passion is adventure sports, so that's what drives me. I think it's important for anybody to have some sort of passion in their life that really uh, drives them to do the things that they want to do. All right. Uh, moving back over to Sam, I know that um, in 2000, after the accident, you were looking for a mentor, and you found one, a guy uh, in Formula One, correct, that had done somewhat what you had done. Uh, having seen someone blaze that trail, what was it like for you knowing, you know what, I can do this? Well, it really was, uh, like Mark was saying, uh, you know, you can pretty much do anything you put your mind to. Frank Williams uh, was in Formula One, got paralyzed in a, in a car accident, and went back right right back to what he was doing before with no limitations. And, and so, uh, even though it was challenging, he had to figure out how to travel a lot and uh, figure out how to, you know, make things happen um, and build a team. I had been, you know, Prior to my accident, been pretty much a, a real Type A personality. Didn't delegate very well or anything like that. And now, <laughs> this is a this is 180 degrees. You got to figure out how to delegate real well, and you got to surround yourself with good people. So, um, you know, that's really been a learning experience for me, and, and and it's been very productive. When we were talking earlier off stage, you were saying that the one thing that you've really learned is that you have to get out and go. You have to get out and do it. Uh, you travel 100 days a year. You're based out of Las Vegas. You spend a lot of time here in Indiana, so you're living that advice. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I get a lot of questions like, "How do you travel? How do you do this? How do you do that?" And it's just, uh, you know, you just got to have patience and you got to work work through it. It takes a lot more preparation. I used to be a very spontaneous guy, and uh, that doesn't happen anymore. You got to plan things out really well. And and the great news now, you know, even more so now than 13 years ago and 25 years ago, is is just like you see here the the incredible equipment that's come on the market, um, whether it be you know getting up every morning or everyday living or uh, electronic access, uh, my smartphone, you know all of these things that they didn't have thir you know 13 years ago to help you get through life and make life at least a little bit easier, a little more uh, attainable. It's all out there. You just gotta find it and use it. And Mark, 
you were a trailblazer, obviously, in your sport, and now you're kind of passing that along to other people. We saw uh, just a few minutes ago guys going up there, and um, you're kind of a mentor for them. So what's it like to, to bring the sport of rock climbing to people who are in the same situation that you were in? Oh, it's, it's exciting, you know. Uh, it, like I said, thinking out of the box, you know, a lot of people with disabilities, you know, you kind of get locked into your situation. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things out there, like Sam was saying, there's uh, technology has really helped the disabled community. And uh, there's all kinds of things out there to do. Uh, today, we got the rock climbing wall and, and you might not know how you're going to climb it. But if you come by and see me, uh, I've had over 30 years of experience with uh, adaptive climbing. Uh, got hurt in a climbing accident 31 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the old cliche, jumping back on the horse, so to speak. And sometimes it's easier to say that than actually do it. But uh, it can be done. And, and like Sam was saying, you have to be patient. You have to sort of plan out your, your day a little bit more. But uh, hey, uh, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, you mentioned 31 years ago, 1982, you were just 21 years old, so a young guy. What was going through your mind at the time of the recovery process? Because I know you had to be thinking in the back of your mind, i got to get back out there on the mountain. I, I was, you know. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know, I had some, a really good rehab experience. Uh, being a paraplegic, I had to turn my arms into my legs. I had to get real strong. And, uh, you know, moving back into Yosemite, being in the mecca of big wall climbing in this country, uh, just really got me back into the sport and fortunately I met Mike Corbett and did 7,000 pull-ups in eight days. That's, I don't think I could do that ever in my entire lifetime. Yeah. Uh, seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, um, you guys have both mentioned the technology that has advanced and, and, and made things a little easier, uh, but you're definitely involved in that on a daily basis with some of the, uh, some of the uh, places and factories that you work with and they're here in Indiana. You work with uh, a company out in Winnemag. Tell us a little bit about that and what they're doing. Well, uh, I think uh, Mark mentioned Mr. Corbett. My, uh, my mentor these last few years has been Ralph Braun. I mean, uh, talk about a guy that, you know, created something out of necessity because he didn't have use of his legs. Uh, but we're talking the 50s here. This is really archaic. And he, he made a three-wheel scooter. Then he went on to make a lift system. And he's gone on to create these, uh, you know, wheelchair-accessible vans and uh, really made uh, everything accessible uh, from a transportation standpoint over the last 50 years. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Ralph uh, this February, but you know, his, his company and his vision and his uh, integrity, everything lives on, you know, through that company. Uh, also involved with uh, Newmar out of Goshen, Indiana. They, uh, they produce wheelchair accessible production motorhomes, you know, so uh, that's what I'm staying in down at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway the entire month. It's, uh, it's a beautiful motorhome. And, Again, that might not be your cup of tea, but if that's what it takes you to get you and your family out, uh, you know, seeing America and all that stuff, then, you know, all that stuff out there. I mean, uh, uh, I just rolled around the expo very briefly, but, uh, you know, the electronic systems, the, uh, the voice activation, the uh, Bluetooth, all of this stuff is just incredible out there. And it's, uh, you just gotta, you just gotta figure out how to get it done. And for you, you mentioned you're spending the entire month here in the state of Indiana because of the Indy 500. 